to each other um, to see if there's something that somebody said tonight that sparked something for you um, that you want to share or there's a question that came up for you um, anything like that so Tracy you want to come up um, <laughs> I'm at home <laughs> uh, so yeah I think it's I think it's that a matter of fact I probably didn't even need to come up <laughs> This is just an opportunity to reflect on what you've heard, um, if you have a short story. Well, the idea was to roughly end this about 7.30, but I'm looking at Donna. There you go. She's honing in on me, <laughs> right? So maybe even if it goes a little bit past 7.30, but if there's any questions for the people you heard, or if there's something on your heart that you want to say, especially as it relates to this idea of unity, um, go for it. You can come up or you can stand up or you can, yeah. Thank you. My name is Sharima and um, I wanted to share just a brief story um, about Tendaji. Um, he was my boss, actually. Um, Tendaji was a lion in my life, and I worked in the EOI and Educational Opportunity Initiatives at U of M Flint uh, from 2004 to 2007. And then I graduated with my bachelor's degrees uh, in 2007. Tendaji, I worked in EOI and I was with the Transitions Program. I worked with James Anthony, who was cousin to Gary Jones, who's, uh, who's just up here speaking. And, yes, ma'am. And, and we worked with. Uh, EOI was lots of different programs, and we worked with all, just people from all walks of life. And my particular um, part was to work with people who transitioned from Mott Community College to U of M Flint after they obtained their associate's degrees. But Tindaji, you know what Gary was talking about, Tindaji Wood, you know, he fostered an atmosphere in EOI that was of love. It was of creativity. And even maybe even Crystal could speak to this too. Uh, we worked together at the same time. That we were there for each other, and we were there for the students that we were there to serve. And serve we did. And this was the kind of culture that Tendaji fostered, and that Tendaji made sure that we were all aboard, on board with, that we all flowed with. And I can see that influence even here tonight. I too am a Flintstone. I was raised in Flint. I remember those sidewalks. And I was raised on Raskob Street between Lavender and Forest Hill at, at Flushing and Ballinger. And so being you know, being on the fabric of Flint, but being a part of Tendaji's team was deeply powerful for me. One particular thing that Tendaji did for me personally was he funded my ability to go to a four-month training. It was called Leadership Development and Interracial, Interracial Relations, the LEADER program. There's a few of us here tonight who are part of that. And I was able to be a part of this wonderful training that was run from the YWCA on how to have community dialogues about, viol about violence, about race, about class, about gender, anything. We were talking about um, earlier, intersectionality fatigue. Yeah, been there. And Tendaji did that for me, where he funded my tuition to go to this four-month training. And our, my particular team took on the subject of youth violence. And we were able to talk to the young people and understand their stories and listen to them and hear them into speech. That was an influence in my life that I will never forget. And Tendaji was deeply important to me. When he died almost two years ago, in April, April 17th, when he died, the old Walt Whitman poem, Captain My Captain, was what sat with me for a very long time. Captain My Captain. And so I just wanted to share that tonight about Tendaji and his influence in, in my life. Thank you. I just, I just want to say, this isn't a specific one. I just want to applaud uh, the intersectionality that was present tonight. Um, I think that's incredibly difficult of um, anybody that's in the midst of resistance to remember. Um, 
like I know that's something that I struggle with, particularly like from like my place of privilege and whatnot. That like no no other struggle looks like mine, and so to be reminded of that like through like these amazing poems and just discussions and things like that, um, I know that it's got to be tiring for you guys, um, and that term intersection uh, intersectional fatigue, but like just thank you. Like, there's nobody else that can tell it. And so I'm sorry that that falls to you, but I appreciate that. And I'm sure everybody here appreciates that. So thank you. Hi, my name is Beth, and I also went to University of Michigan. Yes. <laughs> I'm like y'all young people. I went back to school in my 50s and graduated with honors, okay? Yes. <laughs> Dr. Currier, as I grad when I left, I started calling her Dr. Tracy because I'm older than her, so she's still a doctor now, but it's Dr. Tracy. <laughs> I took a class in spoken word, literally to get the grade. You know, I would take hard stuff, medium stuff, and kind of easy, and I said, that'd be fun. And it was, it was just awesome. She brought back a part of me in my life that had been long forgotten. How I used to like to write and quote word and stuff, and I got it, and I haven't left it, and I love it. Dr. Tanaji. Oh my God, I thought that was his last name. The whole time I was at University of Michigan, I didn't know, I still don't know how to pronounce the G part. It was just Dr. Tanaji, okay? And um, I was talking with the young man, Gary, and he gave me a little history. And I said, didn't Dr. Tanaji start the EOI program? And he said, no, some other guy did, but as far as I'm concerned, Tanaji did. I never even heard of it. Okay? And I was back there during that time. I never even heard of it. Somebody spoke on the transitions program. Oh my God. And I said, Clara, because you said James Jones. I was talking about Clara Blakely. I'm from that era. That program was started by the EOI program, the transition program. And Garrett was saying it was to help young people. No, it helped old people right. like me too. Because there were so many times I wanted to drop out, I can't do it. And I'd run and talk to Claire and James, and they would encourage me and keep me going and stuff. Um, I think this is awesome. I love spoken word. I love that it was brought back to me. I miss the days. You don't remember me, but I saw you when you was a kid, baby. Yeah. It's about word up there, great good beans. Yeah. <laughs> I'd always get confused and call it green bean. <laughs> My husband would correct me. I don't know how. Green beans? I got soul in me. Green beans, okay? <laughs> Ms. Womack is just wonderful. If you ever see anything where she's performing her whole, what's the word I'm looking for? She sings and she does stories and she does spoken word. It's all about Flint and the heart of Flint. And it's just, I can go on, okay? I'm gonna stop. It's just good to see all the different cultures here. It's just wonderful. And I'm stop. Thank you. <laughs>
first of all, like what I could remember about him, like I was probably only there about three, four months in the EOI program. And he had this presence about himself. Like I'm pretty, I'm a pretty tall cat, you know. But when he walked in a room, anybody ever saw a Lion King? <laughs> it was like Mufasa was coming. <laughs> like, like Mufasa, you know. Um, he just he had the presence and like the way he could speak. Also, I was in his uh, other teaching program. He used to always like come out to our little banquets and whatnot. And every time he talked, like you just had to hear what he had to say. And um, like it was, it's a blessing to to have that presence, you know, and um, I think that's all I really got to say. Also, I remember uh, Mr. Bean, he was, he was my teacher. I had hair then, I know you probably don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I can remember, if I learned nothing else in your economic class, it was uh, supply and demand. <laughs> but that's all I got to say, thank you. close it out. I wanted to make an announcement about the community read. Were, were you going to actually? No. Read? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the community read, um, Flint community read, is a series that a group of us came together to um, talk about issues of intersectionality. We are reading Between the World and Me, and so it is this Saturday from 11 to 1 at the Nazarene. I am looking at Shawnee. Oh. Flint Central uh, Church of the Nazarene on Bristol Road, kind of across from Baker. Flint Central, okay, on um, Bristol Road. So that is this week free. Please come. If you don't have a book, that's okay. We have a few more to give out. And as I close out, this is what I said. In honoring our ancestors, right, and honoring those who came before so that, that we can have a pathway to walk on and be here today, we set this chair out realizing that Tendaji is here. His presence is not gone. It is in each and every one of us. Every time we speak, we evoke the spirit of Tendaji which means actuality that his spirit is not only here, but also his presence and his flesh is here. Mm -hmm. So I would say as I move on and pass it on to Donna, go forth and continue the spirit of today. I doubt I'm going to need the microphone. <laughs> Tendani and I joined the University of Michigan Flint at the same time, and we were the odd people out for a very well-established administration, and they didn't, weren't sure if either one of us were going to fit in, which meant we bonded immediately, <laughs> and we may, remained just best friends for a very, very long time. Earlier this year in the Tendaji Talks, one of our speakers said, find someone who isn't you, doesn't look like you and be able to have those conversations, be able to ask Crystal the questions I have about being black. Tadaji was that for me. I could say things about the things I didn't understand, and just like everybody said, he'd go into teaching mode. And the lion thing, I can see you, just the shoulders go down and up. <laughs> so, and his giggle and all of that. But, um, but he was that person for many, many years for me just a really important man. I used to tell him regularly that I believed he was saving lives every day with the kind of work he and his whole staff were doing. Very important work for everybody in this community. So that's what the Tendaji Talks have been about. Neighborhoods Without Borders is an organization of people across this community who are really working to just tear down those borders of misunderstanding, <laughs> of lack of information. And so if any of you care to join us, we're going to we were fortunate to get another uh, grant for this coming year, and we're going to do some more active things in the community. Uh, and so if you would leave your name at the back table and your email address, we'll keep you in touch. We meet on the, the fourth Thursday of the third Thursday of the month. Um, but we are going to be doing some more uh, we're certainly going to continue this lecture series. We'll take ideas from you. But we're also going to be doing some, some high visibility community events as well uh, this coming year. But the whole intention is to do exactly what's happened here tonight. Bring people together mm -hmm. and understand that the Muslim religion is nothing to fear. Mm -hmm. Right? It's the fanatics at some far end of that religion, just like the fanatics at some far end of our Christian religions. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know, people are not who we should fear, right? 
can fear the misunderstanding and that kind of thing. So anyway, that's what this is all about, and that's what we hope to continue on, and it's one of those elements um, that really does make, I think, Flint a really wonderful place to be because you can look at one another, and I can talk to Tracy about things that I don't get. What am I missing here? So fill me in. So, um, so keep that in mind. On the 16th, our final one for this year is happening, and we're going to be looking at African American education, a, a specific curriculum of one of the faculty members over at U of O Flint, and she wants feedback on this curriculum. So um, please think about joining us on the 16th for that one, and I'll read these out. And I have to pitch something else I'm working on, um, and that's the Flint Youth Film Festival, which is coming up in July. We're running free. Uh, weekend filmmaking workshops over at Mott every Saturday and this is for middle schoolers, high schoolers, college students and anyone not in college to the age of 25. Uh, we're hosting it at the FIA, they're one of our partners. So if anybody's into making films, if your kids, grandkids, if you're making films, music videos, whatever, um, this is another way to make your voice matter. And I certainly heard some, in some incredible voices this evening that probably should end up as a spoken word performance or a music video. <laughs> enter, enter in this festival. Enter in this festival. So I'll pitch that. Um, they've got all of our information at the desk. And thank you all for coming. And hope you'll come out and continue these conversations with us because it really is helpful to all of us to know each of us.